This is my uh, Commodore 64 that um, I built on a 60 clone um, motherboard. It's a brand new motherboard, um, brand new manufactured. And I've made a few modifications to this um, this computer. Um, it uh, isn't your stock Commodore 64. Um, has a few modifications. So. First of all, here's here's a, the 64. It's uh, it's got a new uh, modeled uh, 25407 uh, 60 clone board. Um, this is like the older rev of the board. The um, wasn't the first rev that was common in the bread bins. Um, it was the second one that was probably the most um, common um, style board for the bread bin. Um, <clears throat> so. Some modifications here. I have a VIC 2.2 2, um, uh, NTSC PAL switcher, so it has uh, both uh, both NTSC and uh, PAL VIC 2 chips. And uh, flipping this switch can uh, switch between the two modes. Um, I have a Shuriken um, modulator delete board, and the goal of this build was to to make to use uh, as many new manufactured parts as possible. So where I could could use chips that were brand new manufactured I did that um, and um, there's actually a um, the, the chips that are original are the 6526 CIA chips of course the uh, CPU it's a 6510 CPU actually in this one I think I have a 8500 which is a slightly newer rev of the uh, 6510 CPU um, I've got a, a new PLA um, this is a Placer model. Uh, I have several new different mo models of uh, new PLAs, but this one seems to be the, the lowest power consumption, so I went with that. And then I have the ARM SID um, SID chip, um, which um, kind of auto detects uh, what what mode, what voltage of, of the board you're in, and um, kind of chooses. Uh, you can also there's also utilities where you can upgrade the firmware in this and, and program it, um, and in actuality, the, the processing power in this, this ARM set is probably um, more processing power than the entire Commodore 64. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Uh, let's see, I've got a modification up, up top here. Um, this is a, uh, it's just kind of taped in here for now. I just put it in. So it's, um, it's a, um, a LED that, that flashes green when, when there's uh, IRQ traffic. And uh, so it's, it's soldered down here to a higher key line on the cartridge port. Um, I also have uh, these ROM. These are selectable ROM chips. These are brand new. Um, and instead of using the old um, original ROM chips, now th there's there's different positions that these switches can switch to. So you can uh, switch them between like a character ROM, a kernel ROM. Um, you know what? I think they, they even uh, will switch to a, a 1541 ROM. So um, they're, they're the same price as the, the, the new ROMs that were uh, just a single single ROM. So uh, I'd rather have the flexibility of, of having the switchables. Um, I also have another board that uh, will lay down here on these RAM chips. Uh, you take the RAM chips out, and it's a new SRAM mo module, and it, it plugs into the 25407 um, sockets and um, su supplies the RAM. I haven't. I, I had some issues troubleshooting uh, this board initially, so uh, around the video, and um, it, um, and I took it out. I haven't put it back in yet because uh, these are kind of a pain to get in and out. Um, and then one thing I noticed with this board, um, it requires a if you use a modulator delete board such as, such as the Shuriken or a meta modulator delete, um, you have to run at extra ground line to ground. Um, I'm not sure if it's a, I think it might be an issue with the 60 clone itself, but for whatever reason, um, the, the video looks pretty bad, the modulator delete, until you um, move the, until you ground it, and then it seems to clear things up. Um, let's see, everything, the, the, let's see, the, the hard parts on the Commodore 64, really the, the switch is kind of difficult to get nowadays. Seems like there, there's there's more options. Um, 
these these plugs are are difficult to get. I think it's the uh, the serial port that's that's harder to to find. Um, and the, these other two are, I think you can find them in, on places like Mauser and, and Digikey, um, the online electronic supply uh, providers. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm, I'm building a um, a um, a new keyboard, it's the uh, MEC board. Um, so I had the boards uh, made up and, and sent out, and I, it's kind of a slow process. So eventually this keyboard, this old original keyboard, we swapped out for the, for the new MEC board. Um, so I'll, I'll probably show that in a different video. Um, yeah, so that's uh, the new 60 clone board that I built. Um, I'm probably going to um, build up a uh, 250466 board next um, seems to have be the best of both worlds as far as between the, the newer 25469 board and the this this version of the board um, because it uh, still uses the 25466 board still uses the, the PLA and all the, the normal chips it doesn't have that that monstrous uh, super PLA that's kind of hard to find that, that's in the 25469 um, but the 25466 uses uh, the two um, two chips for for RAM rather than the eight chips um, RAM chips, so it's a, a little more reliable in the fact that you're only dealing with two chips instead of eight. Uh, if if so there's some kind of RAM issue, um, yeah. So that's it. Uh, that's my 25407 board, and um, I'll probably do a, another video on the MET board once I I get that complete.